murdered over the cash in the register at a Dollar General. In the wintertime, I got pneumonia from working in those conditions. We're back in Dollar General, and this is absolutely ridiculous. Dollar General is the fastest growing retailer in the U.S., opening about a thousand stores a year. Yet, with over $2.4 billion in profits, Dollar General increasingly finds itself at the center of health and safety violations, controversial firing of employees that speak out, and so much more bad behavior. This is the story of how corporate executives of Dollar General are putting profits over people, resulting in devastating consequences with employees, customers, and communities. With over 19,000 U.S. locations and growing, Dollar General's quest for dominance seemingly has no bounds. There's more than four times as many Dollar Generals as there are Walmarts. There's more Dollar Generals than there are McDonald's in the United States. This insatiable appetite for growth at all costs comes with harmful consequences for the typically small-town employees that end up working at Dollar General. The stores are often unsanitary, filled with filth and downright dangerous. On surveillance video, you can see one Dollar General store worker fighting for his life. Around the same time, a female co-worker in another part of the store was begging a second assailant to spare her life because she has children. And there are countless other stories out there of Dollar General employees being attacked and threatened during the normal course of their working day. Why are Dollar General stores so prone to these often deadly behaviors? Well, often located on the edges of small towns and low-income areas, Dollar General's ultra-low cost growth strategy relies on staffing stores with the absolute bare minimum number of people it takes to maximize profits. So depending on the time of day, an entire store in the middle of nowhere could be staffed by just one person, which is often why Dollar Generals look like this. This level of understaffing can lead to the inhumane denial of basic human necessities such as using the bathroom without having to resort to closing down the entire store. I am currently locked in a Dollar General right now. Why am I locked in a Dollar General, you ask? Because um, the Dollar General that I'm at, there is one person working, one person, and she had his bathroom. However, as long as the money keeps rolling in, Dollar General Corporate is more than okay with Band-Aid solutions. According to a story by Bloomberg, David Williams was in his first month working at a Dollar General in New Orleans when a manager ordered him to block the fire exits. While he was unloading sausages and soup cans, the manager called him over to a fire door and showed him how to build a pyramid out of water cases that would obstruct it. The idea was to deter shoplifting. Williams was put in an impossible situation as he knew this was dangerous and felt guilty. But if he wanted to keep his job, he had to do it. Fast forward a couple of years and the store caught on fire a week before Christmas. Thankfully, the fire happened in the early morning and no one was inside the store. That same store has since reopened and while his bosses haven't explicitly asked him to block the fire exits again, they do still have other people doing it clearly signaling a now pervasive culture that refuses to learn from its past mistakes. And it gets worse. Doug Parker of the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OHSA, was quoted saying, the thing that concerns us about Dollar General is the consistency with which we find similar hazards at workplace after workplace. Did you know Dollar General is the first major retailer the OHSA has deemed a severe violator of federal workplace safety law, a label that was once only applied to the shadiest of construction companies? And the reports continuing to come out of the OHSA on Dollar General are downright disturbing. Dollar General has failed hundreds of government safety inspections over the last several years and has racked up more than $25 million in proposed fines for alleged violations spanning dozens of states. This number includes $9 million issued last year alone, double the fines aimed at Dollar Tree, their next largest competitor. But with over $37 billion in revenue last year alone, this is pocket change in just the cost of doing business for Dollar General. The OHSA has accused Dollar General of repeatedly and sometimes willfully exposing employees to needless risks such as getting hit by falling products, being electrocuted by dangerous equipment, or being sickened by poor pest control procedures. It seems Dollar General employees are consistently subjected to extreme working conditions. I would be 90 plus in the summer, and then in the wintertime it was like 40s, 50s in the store, like you could see your breath. Dollar General's corporate culture turns a blind eye to situations that will be unimaginable in other retail settings. 
For example, groups of sparrows and blackbirds nested in the ceiling of a store in Apache, Oklahoma, and began regularly defecating on the store's merchandise. The store's manager pleaded with corporate to get help resolving the situation, but Dollar General's higher-ups wouldn't let his team throw out the soiled products, including pillows stained with excrement. Instead, they were ordered to clean the items, in some cases by bringing them home to wash and return them to the shelves. And there's more. The same store manager filed a ticket in Dollar General's internal system asking for help removing the nests, but he says he was ignored because the birds weren't stealing anything. Dollar General was also fined for selling expired medication. Imagine being sick to the bone and desperate for some relief, only to be sold expired medication that could very well make matters much worse for you. Beyond the blatant health and safety hazards of working or even shopping at Dollar General, there's always a sense of danger lurking in the air. Often located on the outskirts, with no dedicated security and only one to maybe a couple employees at a time, working at Dollar General simply isn't worth it. But their overwhelming dominance and incredibly low prices often drive out mom and pop stores, leaving Dollar General as the only place in town to get a job whether you like it or not. Yet, Dollar General pay averages under $11 per hour. That's even worse than Walmart and McDonald's pay of about $13 an hour, many of whose employees have to rely on food stamps just to make ends meet. And speaking up for safety at Dollar General can put your livelihood at risk. There are shocking revelations of how employees that tried to speak up for their own and customer safety ended up out of the job. Last year, Mary Gundle, a store manager in Tampa, Florida, was fired after she went viral for posting many of Dollar General's shortcomings online. Because of my budget cuts, I'm here by myself until two o'clock. And Mary's story is not a one-off. In 2016, Joanne Sheridan Turner, a district manager in Florida, says she was shocked by how hard it was to fund basic upkeep for stores she managed. When she brought serious safety concerns to Dollar General's corporate that include faulty doors to black mold, her bosses told her there was no budget to fix them. Then, after she spent months trying to get approval to replace outdoor lights at one store where employees were clocking out late at night, headquarters allegedly demanded a photo to prove how dark it was. They're not investing in anything, Sheridan said, and she claims the company fired her last year after she filed a human resources complaint against a supervisor. And while not everyone that speaks up ends up getting fired, their work lives often end up being made far more difficult. In Georgia, a former employee says she broke out in hives from the constant heat and caked dust. So how did Dollar General respond? They cut her hours. And the culture of retaliation doesn't stop there. A few years ago, a Dollar General in Missouri was shut down after it tried to unionize. Further to that, the National Labor Relations Board prosecutors say that when workers in Connecticut also tried to organize and form a union, Dollar General management made an implied threat to close their store and fired a leader of the unionization effort on the grounds that he'd uttered a curse word when complaining about clutter. This year, an NLRB judge ruled that the organizer be reinstated and further went on to say that Dollar General's legal violations were numerous and blatant and involved individuals at the highest levels of management. All these penny-pinching decisions by Dollar General corporate have real life and often devastating consequences for employees. She told him at the time robberies were a real problem in that area and that her store specifically had been robbed 10 times in the past year. Now. She's dead. Dollar General has big plans for its growth, and with profits of more than $2.4 billion, they have the money to continue their rapid sprawl. Yet, this incredible growth has taken a toll on communities and employees, and now more than ever, people are fighting back against Dollar General's unchecked corporate greed. Store employees, former managers, local lawmakers, and regulators are all banding together to try and put an end to Dollar General's behavior of profits over people. Even investors are sounding the alarm about the company, and if money talks, Dollar General is now bound to listen. They're not caring about our health. They're not caring about what their stores look like, you know, and so if you're in that position, yeah, stand up for yourselves. An astounding four in every five Dollar Generals are located in towns with fewer than 20,000 people. And given how several small businesses find it impossible to compete with such a behemoth taking over their town, Dollar General ends up being a necessary evil and the only place in town for basic necessities such as cleaning and hygiene products. However, communities and towns have taken notice, with many introducing laws that now severely limit or outright ban the entry of dollar stores into their communities. 
Dollar General Corporate has the moral failings of exemplifying the worst behaviors of putting profits above all else and negatively affecting the communities they live in. Even after being put on the OSHA's severe valitor list, Dollar General has continued to rack up dozens of citations and the agency has issued millions of dollars more in proposed fines. But even if Dollar General pays all it owes the OSHA, that would barely make a dent in their business model and thirst for growth at all costs. And in several states, the OSHA lacks the power to truly compel Dollar General to institute meaningful and lasting change. US regulators all over view the issues at Dollar General as systemic and not only isolated to a few incidents. Doug Parker, the Labor Department's Assistant Secretary for Occupational Safety and Health stated, this is an indication of a business model issue. We have had enough experience at Dollar General to know this is not a function of just a handful of stores. This is a broader problem that's going to have to be addressed at the C-suite and not by local and regional safety directors. So the question is, will Dollar General executives step up or will they keep their blinders on? Only time will tell, but until then, thousands of employees and customers will be risking their safety every single time they step into a Dollar General. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and feel free to share your thoughts on today's deconstruction in the comments down below.